Hey dolls! So you requested this and I am doing it. So today we are doing three very easy, affordable DIY projects that you can use in your rat cages. They're gonna be a little bridge, a little box hidey house, and then a little treat toy. So if you guys wanna see how I made these, go ahead and keep watching. The few things that you're gonna need for the first little project are some toilet paper rolls. You can also use paper towel rolls or even wrapping paper rolls if you cut them down into sections that are about this wide or maybe even wider. Just make sure they are all equal in size. I'm using five, but you can use anywhere from like five to 10, depending on how big your rat cage is. You're gonna need some fleece. This is stuff that I just got at a local thrift store. I brought it home, washed it up in a non-scented fabric softener, and it just has like little babies on it. This doesn't matter because we are going to be cutting this up, so it doesn't really matter what it looks like, just whatever colors you want to correspond with your cage. And then the last thing that you're going to need besides scissors to cut the fleece with are some shower curtain hooks and these you can find at your local Dollar Tree that's where I got these ones you can also find them very very cheap at places like Walmart and we are going to use these to hang the projects that we make in the cage starting out with all of your little toilet paper rolls here once you have cut them to size if you did in fact use a few toilet paper rolls and cut them down to size or whatever once you are at this stage then we are going to go ahead and start puncturing holes in these now we're just going to use our scissors to do this you can do this with other tools if you feel more comfortable to do so but basically what i'm going to do is just use my scissors like this i'm just going to puncture a hole just like that one on each side just like so and then we're going to flip it over exactly and you want to line up where that other hole will be and then just puncture that hole in there again on both sides again you want to be very very careful with this step and please 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 have parental supervision if you are younger doing something like this and again you can use different tools to do this you can poke it straight through um, I like to do one little section at a time just so I don't hurt myself with the scissors but if you don't want to go out of your way and get additional tools scissors work just fine since the toilet paper rolls are fairly thin so there we have one I'm gonna do the exact same thing to the remaining rolls Okay, so now once you have all of your rolls with all of your holes, then we are going to cut some strips of fleece, just two of them. So you want to get your fleece and you'll notice if you're not familiar with fleece, you will notice that one side is not very stretchy. So you want to tug it to see which side is not the stretchy side. And then this side, as you can see, has some stretch to it. So with fleece, one side is stretchy when you tug it and the other side is not. We are going to cut along the side that is not stretchy. So whichever way it is not super stretchy, that's the way we want to cut our strips. As you can see, when I tug it, it's not super stretchy that way. So that's how I'm going to lay it out. And I'm going to start cutting my little strips. Just cutting straight up. And then I like to do mine about an inch in width. You can do yours a little bit thicker or a little bit smaller. You just want to make sure that it will be able to stabilize and hold the weight of the wraps on it. So I like to do mine a little bit thicker. Just like so. There is one strip and then one more. These do not have to be perfect by any means at all. Okay, so the next step is actually to take the fleece and either fold it or roll it up as small as you can on one end, just like so. And then we are gonna start pushing it through these little holes. And this part can be pretty time consuming or pretty tricky, but that is okay. So you basically just want to push it through one side and out the other and then go ahead and continue this all on one side all the way down and once they are strung together on one side we will repeat the same process on the other side. 
as you're stringing this on, you wanna make sure that they stay snug together. You don't want any like loose gaps or openings in between them. So you can see what it looks like with one side strung through. Now we are going to go ahead and do the same thing to the other side. We are at this point. Again, as mentioned before, you can use as many of these as you want. If you have a huge cage, if you have a giant critter nation, you can use like 20 of these things and string it all together and make a giant one. But for me, I'm just gonna do a little one on this scale right here, just to kind of show you guys an example. Typically, I would wanna make this at least seven to 10 long. I'm going to cut these little ends right here. I'm gonna cut these in half just so they are a lot easier to tie a little knot into. And before I tie this, I'm actually gonna put one of these little shower rings in here like so to kind of get an idea of how tight I can make this. And I am going to double knot. Just like so, making, that it, making sure that is very secure. And there we have one end. And now I'm gonna go ahead and do the other three sides as well. Okay, and there you have it, your little bridge. Now again, depending on the size, if this is a really, really long one, you can just attach it to the sides of the cage or to the ceiling and have it like droop down like so. Really all depends on just how you wanna play with it or what you wanna do. But you can also, if you're making a smaller one like I have here, you can also connect and link these shower curtains just like so. And that is going to allow for you to kind of create a chain link in order to hang it or extend it further in the cage. Just like that, that gives us some more slack to be able to hang it from, again, the roof or the sides of the cage. So that is the first little DIY bridge project. Moving on to project number two, the first thing that you're going to need is a cardboard box of some sort. And as mentioned, of course, if you have a bigger cage, you can even upscale your cardboard box size immensely if you so choose. Today, I'm just using a little bit of a smaller one. Both of my girls will be able to fit in this with no problem and it will fit in the cage just fine. So you need this and then you will also need some shower hooks again to be able to hang it. And then of course, some scissors and optional are fleece and my girls love to shred up this little shipping paper that I get randomly in packages and I don't like to just throw it away so what I'll do is I'll recycle it in a way that it will benefit my girls and they just love to nest in this stuff so I will constantly use it in little DIY toys and things like that so this is optional the fleece is optional you can get creative with this little DIY box but I'll show you later on kind of how you can get creative with it and different options. The first step that you must must do is take off any excess tape from the box and as you can see this tape right here actually has like these little strings of like plastic in it so this is very very important to take off and get out before you put it in any kind of animal cage because they can choke on things like this and you do not want that to happen. Okay sorry for any confusion but I decided to switch boxes because the last box the tape on that box was literally just a pain in the butt and it was not coming off and I do not want to use something like that in my rat cage without properly taking it off so I'm gonna do that again with a different box now and the next step is to get rid of these little flaps if you wanted to keep them on you totally could but I personally want to take them off I end up actually using these later for other toys which you will see in a little bit once we do the third one Another option is to just completely fold these inward on themselves and then that way they kind of have a flap to chew on from the inside. Sometimes I like to do that, sometimes I don't. It just really all depends on how I'm feeling. I think I am going to leave one flap on here just like so, just so they feel kind of secure when they are in the box. The next step is to, you guessed it, push more holes into these sides right here. You don't have to go exactly in the corner, but kind of close to the edge and just be mindful of your fingers and push through that just like so. And you wanna do this once on each corner. Take your shower rings and string them through the holes. Okay. 
and there you go now you can proceed to hang this from the top of the cage what you can also do what I really really like to do is sometimes keep the top two flaps um, at the top and then cut a hole in the front right here big enough so that the rat or two rats can fit in and then it's kind of closed off and it's just a little box for them to hide out in now for the bottom of the box this is where the fleece and the paper come in you can totally just take some fleece throw it in there line the bottom neatly or just distribute it however you see fit or you can take some of this paper or nesting material you can also use shredded paper which is amazing so if you have a shredded paper you can just grab some of the scraps out of there and stuff it in here since my girls love to nest with this stuff anyway I just like to shred some up and throw it in there for them to nest again you can take a few extra little shower hooks and put them on the ends like so cut a little hole in the side make a little top so that they can go in there and hide and it's just a really cute little easy 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 diy concept it will literally cost you under a dollar to make and these are great because they can totally chew them up and play in them and do whatever they see fit and it's not like you spent a lot of money on a toy from the pet store when you can just make your own little Heidi house yourself. Okay, I did kind of cut a really janky hole in the side just so you guys could see what I was talking about and it can give you guys an idea. Again, you can leave the little top flaps on and they can kind of just burrow in there and they love it. So there is project DIY option number two. Okay, so now moving on to our third and final little project, our little DIY rat toy here. This one's a little bit more advanced in the fact that you need more supplies to do it, but it is still very, very simple to make. The first thing that you're going to need are some Dixie cups. Please make sure that these are the paper ones and not the plastic ones. The plastic ones can hurt your ratties. If they are chewing on them, it can cut them and cause sores in their mouths and they can get them stuck in their tummies and you just, you don't want Want to have that issue there so I actually got these at my local Dollar Tree I like to get fun cute little decorated ones because I love to make my cage super pink and fun and girly so there are these that we are going to use either a drink carrier if you have been to your local fast food restaurant lately you can easily pick one of these things up if you order a couple drinks or even if you only order one or two drinks you can still ask for one and if you don't have those no worries you can use some scrap cardboard that you have lying around from other rat DIY projects like the box we just did you're gonna need some fleece and then some scissors to cut the fleece and puncture holes. And then finally, you're going to need a shower hook and one of these little lobster claw hooks. I'm not exactly what sh these are called. So if you know, please leave a comment down below, but you can easily get these at your local Dollar Tree as well. First thing that we're going to do with this is cut our fleece. And if you guys remember, one side is stretchy and one side is not. So we are going to lay our fleece down and cut a couple strips the non-stretchy way. Now, depending on how big you want to make this toy, you can cut multiple strips and do two or three of these toys and just attach them together. And if you want to just make this toy outrageously huge and fun for your rats, you are more than welcome to think on that bigger scale. The next step is to take a couple of our Dixie cups and you guessed it, time to puncture some holes. We're gonna puncture a hole in the bottom about like so, just big enough for the fleece to stick through. And then what we are going to do is use this and we're going to kind of cut out these little sections right here. We're going to cut those out just like so. And if you have excess like hanging off the sides and things, that is totally okay. It does not have to be perfect by any means. Next, we are going to take and puncture a hole right in the center of that. This one's a little bit tougher because it's thicker, but just like so. And as you can see, this fits perfectly on top of the little Dixie cup like so. But instead of one of these this time, I'm actually gonna show you what I would do with the remaining cardboard. And I'm just gonna cut a little square out 
just like so. It does not have to be perfect. Again, this is just, your rats are just going to rip it up and destroy it anyway, so it's totally fine. So as you can see, it sits on top of the cup just like so. So now I'm going to take my scissors and puncture a hole through that. And I'm actually going to take another chunk of this cardboard and puncture another hole through and use this for the base of the toy. Simple enough, easy enough. Let's go ahead and string this fleece through. Now again, if you want to scale this up or scale this down using like only one Dixie cup for a tiny one or like five for a huge one, you totally can. Let your imagination wander and be creative. So next, I'm actually just gonna take this excess right here and instead of, I was originally gonna cut this in half and then do one of those double knots, but instead this is long enough for me to just tie this as is. I don't have the need to cut it in half. So that is perfect. But even when I don't cut it in half, I still like to go back and kind of cut some little tassels on the bottom just to make it look cuter. So you can go and cut some little strips off of that piece right there to make it look like a little tassel dangling down, which is really cute. Okay, before I tie the top or before I hang the top, I am going to show you guys that in here, I like to hide some treats. And this part is optional, but again, I like to take some paper. You can use just regular printer paper too. That is totally fine. I like to take some paper and just kind of rip it and bunch it up and stick it in here. And then I will hide some little treats in the container itself. A great treat for you to hide in kind of excess amounts sometimes are Cheerios, just regular plain Cheerios. And what you can do is just drop a couple of those in there and then seal off the top like so by pushing these close together. And then I'm going to do that once again. It is totally optional to put the treats in there. I just think that if they can smell them in there, it encourages them to play with things that they're meant to chew on or rip up rather than ripping up and chewing like plastic in the cage and things that they're not supposed to chew on. So just like that, that is what that looks like. Now what we are going to do is grab our little hook like so. And I am going to cut this one down the middle on the top just so it's easier to tie. And then I kind of lied. You can either use one of these or you can use this one. It doesn't really matter whatever you wanna do, but I am just going to tie this on here like so. On that clip, you are ready to go. So again, you can either stop here and just use this little clip to hang it up, or you can go even on a bigger scale and use a shower curtain hook to hang it even lower or just use a few of these to create that chain link once again but there is your final little toy so that is it for this super simple rat toy DIY, super cheap, super affordable, doesn't take that much time to do, and your rats will definitely thank you for giving them toys to chew up and shred and play with. Let me know which one of these you guys like the most. Was it the bridge, the box, or the little treat toy? Let me know if you've tried any of these or if you plan to. Don't forget that if you do recreate these and put them in your rat cage, send me photos on my Twitter and my Instagram at Amanda3409. I would love to see your little ratty babies playing around with them. That would just make my day. With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and let you guys go. I hope you all enjoyed this and I will talk to you all in my next video. So until then, so long, stay strong, stay true, and be you. All right, bye!